Hey, I just wanted to do a quick intro for our recent guest on the Echoes podcast, my friend Asha, who is an incredible dancer and eco-conscious activist and really a role model for how we can come into a deep sense of sacred practice of connecting in with the earth through our conscious action in the world. And so Asher and I had a wonderful conversation about the heart chakra. We're co-facilitating a movement meditation workshop this, this weekend in Brisbane at West End Yoga. Um, so we're inviting you all to come along. And we just had a conversation about what it really means to connect in with the Mother Earth and to learn to listen to the ecology of our bodies and the ecology of the earth body to understand how we can consciously take action in the world from a place of unconditional love and, and self-love and self-compassion and ways that we can consciously use our action in the world to create regenerative and, and healing uh, and transformative experiences by embodying this sense of unconditional love and, and courage to step into the unknown or that liminal space or to uncover our layers or fears or understand and listen to what is our emotional experience or what is the pain in our body and what does that mean for us and what is the message that that's telling us and so I just wanted to do a quick intro and thank Asha for her time and I'm really looking forward to collaborating with you in this upcoming workshop. If anyone's interested in coming along, uh, we've got the Heart Chakra Magnetic Movement Meditation Workshop happening this weekend. Uh, there'll be some links to the info for that in the description and there's still some places left. So come along if you're interested, if any of this resonates with you and let's get into it. Here's Asha Bowen Saunders. Let's get this started. So <laughs> thank you so much, Asha, um, doing the, the warm welcome and invitation. And, and it's really an honour to share this space with you. And you know that I think the world of you. And so thank you so much for joining me here on this conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, so today I wanted to talk with... So, a little preface is you and I are co-facilitating a, a workshop based around the heart chakra uh, together and you're involved in this colour theory project that I've been developing, which is uh, sort of embodied arts, embodied creative self-expression and exploration of the architecture of the human body and, and all of that kind of wonderful, juicy, creative embodiment stuff. And this is the magic of the work that you do as well. <laughs> and so mm. uh, there is a whole um, a whole number of juicy topics that I'd love, love to touch on with you today. And so we'll just see where the conversation flows. But the first thing that I wanted to ask you um, is just like really simple, what is it that makes your heart sing with joy? Oh. That's not really simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, I guess it is. As you like to go. <laughs> there's, there's many things, but I guess um, most of it's just the like noticing and appreciating nature and actually like verbalizing it with someone as well. Like um, I feel like, yeah, actively observing it and spending spending the, the breath and the time to actually like mention it to someone um is is really nice and you just like think deeper into the appreciation mm, um, so being in it being in it being in the ocean being in being in places where you can just be engulfed in it whether mm -hmm. it is yeah the ocean or a forest or yeah like, places where you're just so stimulated yeah mm, absolutely and movement movement of all kinds of all ways mm -hmm. yeah absolutely I like what you say about um, communication and breath 
because I think that um, breath is, uh, I think, the next element that we come into when we start exploring the heart chakra. Like as we've come up from the lower realms, we've we've got this earth and we've got this fire energy and we've got the mm-hmm. alchemy of the fire and water. And then as we come and reach up into the heart, we add the breath. And mm-hmm. it's how we like give life you know so it's like this this Mm. energy or prana or life force right and I think there's something really magic in that in that the breath connects us all you know and that we all Mm. breathe and that the trees breathe and that the plants breathe and the earth breathes and we have the earth body or the body of the earth has these like breaths so to speak if you will you know if you really connect in with with what's going on in in the climate and the ecosystems she has a rhythm as well like we do with our breath and I just really love that you kind of intuitive intuitively like touched on that because um it's really magic and I think that's a really um integral part of uh this work that we're exploring is like what comes up for us when particularly when we're exploring the heart chakra right now. So like, what is it that comes up for you on the topic of the heart chakra? Like if we're looking at this as a framework for an architecture of the body and exploring that, like, can you, can you talk a little bit to that? Um, I think it is interesting when you're saying like when things organically come up, because I feel like when you think about, um, you know, like having to study or learn or memorise, you know, what, what's written online about what each, like, chakra system does. And, you know, it it, it, it almost like you, you read it and if you're reading it for the first time, you go like, oh, of course, that makes sense, instead of just trying to memorise a list of seemingly unrelated things. Um, yeah. I feel like it, it is, like, it is such an intuitive thing. Like, it's so... Um, it sits so present in the front of how you are in your life. Like it's right. Like if you lead, if you're, if you're a like balanced open body and your shoulders, you know, hang nice and neatly off your skeleton and your arms just hang straight and you feel comfortable and confident in yourself to just be like present as a upright being, then you lead with this heart area, this chest Mm -hmm. area that's just like a, um like that's what you present to the world and then that's actually what you um kind of have things like come in through um yeah and I guess what you what I see a lot and what like many of us can experience as well even in just little pockets of time is when you know imbalances happen you kind of notice what the heart chakra is about when it's not present or when it's out of balance you know if you've even if you've just spent a bunch of hours like sitting on the computer and you've, yeah. you've just fully folded down and you've closed mm. that region of your body, mm. not just we're opening up the back body, mm. um, not really opening it, are we? We're just kind of like sagging it, sagging it open. Yeah. Um, and you notice the deprivation of these things and then the like frustration and all these other little like ticks come in because the energy of the heart chakra that we would normally lead with and have that patience and compassion and understanding and the ability to like laugh little situations off closes down and um like the opposite arises so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I just I feel like um yeah like breath and that ability to see um the beauty and everything and to appreciate things and take take time out of you know, the go-go schedule of everything to actually just sit more presently and observing actually what we're surrounded by and what we're, um, what we're actually part of mm. rather than just me as my individual personality moving through the world as myself. It's like, oh, sink in for a second and, like, brighten up your eyes and you actually get to see what, what you're actually part of. Mm. Yeah, absolutely and it's a really nice lead on to the next question because I think what we realize or what we can have an experience of realizing when we sit in that embodied exploration of the heart chakra is like this connection with mother earth and the ecology 
you know, and I'm really fascinated by these concepts of like ecosomatic inquiry and how we can look at our, our body as part of the earth body and, yeah. um, and even just looking at our body as an ecology as well, you know, like we have our mm-hmm. microbiome. I think it's like, I can't remember the exact percentage, but it's like the majority of the cells in our body aren't actually our own mm-hmm. cells. They're bacteria and viruses and all kinds of different things yeah. going on that's like makes us who we are. It's like literally we're yeah. made up of that stuff, of the matter of the earth. And um, mm-hmm. so, and I, something that I am so called to and something that is so resonant in your work is this connection with ecosomatic inquiry like so much of the work that I see that you do is in nature and it is about coming back to Mm. our connection with nature and so yeah perhaps you could talk a little bit about some of your work and how it is this ecosomatic inquiry and how you use it as a as a tool to connect us back or to remember or to reclaim our sense of wild or something like that you know Mm. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm like the same spheres of thought around <laughs> yeah. and it's hard to like pick a point to start from and yeah. spin that out into the straight line. Um, so I guess it doesn't make sense to just make work or move, make movement that doesn't take us back there to me. Like we have this ability, and I feel like it's such a um, even uh, observing a body moving in space or moving your own body in space um, has super, super powerful way of um, pulling our head out of the um, the restrictions of like where we've where we've got to in, in time, and, like social structure. Mm. Um, yeah, I I don't feel like there's much point in moving it if moving around and like doing using this medicine or, or watching someone else in that medicine if there isn't a reference to what's actually happening and it's like it's undeniable even if we're you know not aware of it we always feel more more in our bodies and more connected and more able to like see the beautiful details of life when we have like sun or um, dance it doesn't have to be you know in a sacred cacao ecstatic dance ceremony it could be you know out clubbing and you've just spent time um with friends just being smothered in music regardless of what frequency it's in um and you know, you come out the other side with a total different outlook on life. So, like, there is this, like, potency there. So why not channel it? Um, I guess, yeah, I had a, I guess a bit of a revelation when I was coming back into dance after having both my knees reconstructed um, and was just super confident that, or not confident, just super sure that I wanted all if not most of everything I do in the arts to kind of call me back there but call others back there if they want to come to um and there is that um that yearning that a lot of us have whether it's more obvious or less obvious of yeah you know trying to get back to like all the different words that you even said like rewild or whatever we call it um and there's like sometimes it's like a painful yearning and yeah. it's just so funny that that the gateway that has been so clear over hundreds of thousands of years of human existence is, is so muddy and so tricky to find now. Um, mm. You know, having to try and reconvince ourselves that we are and having to try and like win people over to the argument that yeah we are part of nature and it's like why 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 does this have to be such a concept that's so hard to explain and because we live like I know I live in my like logical mind sometimes and 
you you can kind of learn and philosophize, philosophize about these things and hear hear you know the the calling back to earth by different teachers and and try and like understand it and listen to it and believe it but I think it doesn't ever land until it's put inside the body Mm, absolutely until you feel it yeah yeah Yeah. if it's like spoken alongside music that takes you back there and like in some sort of you know trance inducing way even just to make you sway to the um like the learnings of or like the re-rememberings or the remindings or whatever it is. Mm, um, absolutely. Yeah, it can't just be it can't just be talk. And I feel like at the moment with especially with our like very needed but like big wave of kind of spiritual return and the kind of whatever our, our new vibe of spirituality is that is crazily popular right now and it it involves a lot of this ancient wisdom kind of packaged up in a modern digestible way that we as current you know modern consumers recognize um it's it's gotta have i don't know gotta have a bit more substance to it by just like practicing i don't know we've just gotta just gotta stop talking <laughs> yeah. start moving up Move body. Body. <laughs> maybe I've got to stop doing that right now because I'm like my words yeah. just went away but no, yeah well, I, I think totally it's get like you. I totally we, we spend so much time talking yeah mm. yeah precisely and I feel like what you say about like recognizing that like life is messy and that there's pain along the way because I think that mm. something that happens in this kind of new age spiritual movement is we can get very caught up in the love and the light and the compassion uh, and then sometimes we can lose sight of reality which actually involves a lot of darkness like look at the analogy of mother earth so to speak like the most fertile ground is in the soil where all the microbes mm. and mushrooms live <laughs> in the dark. And all the dead things. And all the dead things. And yeah. Hey, and that's something I even wanted to bring up today is like these cycles of life that we can connect with is recognizing that death is part of life and the material world, the world of matter and the things that matter pass on. Mm. And, and we pass this mm. cycle, but that's where new life grows from. It's not like mm. the like when we we can become trapped, I think, in sometimes the experience of the sorrow or the experience of the pain and the darkness. Mm. But to rem- remember that in those spaces is where creation exists, in those lim- mm. liminal spaces. And I think that's why dance is so powerful is because it can give you access and it can transport you into these altered states of consciousness where you are in that liminal space, the spiritual space, whatever you want to call it, connecting to source mm. or experiencing the full, fullness of the universe or something like that. And that dance really has the power to do that alongside giving the ground a hug and touching the trees mm. and, and being in nature and connecting with the ecology in that way and making movement in the world also you know like taking action mm. and how we yeah. how we consciously make our movement in the way that is in alignment and connected mm. with the mother earth you know yeah yeah and totally. so like, the big thing is like how we can honor and acknowledge the mother earth and something that i think is also a powerful tool is body work so like not only mm. dance and, and, and moving your body and meditation and embodiment practice, but also like this idea of self-care and self-love and how we can mm. nourish our bodies and also the body of the, work, the, the earth through doing these like mm. action-based endeavours, like, like going to volunteer for a charity or an organisation that cleans up beaches or something like that, you know, and you do a lot of that work. And, you know, I know you do a lot of work with Sea Shepherd and things like that, but you're also a body worker. And so I think in talking about the heart chakra and and this idea of love and self-love and when we expand Mm. our notion of self, 
to include the body of the earth and our own bodies like how can we come into practices of self-care more deeply and how do we nourish our body so perhaps like you could speak to me a little bit of that you know as a zentai shiatsu massage therapist and body worker like how can we come into these like conscious modes of being that acknowledge the body of the earth and acknowledge our own bodies in the state of being that they're in yeah it's it's crazy to watch the changes in a person when like pre having another human touch them and then post and you know it's yes it, it could be like you getting into someone's trap and releasing a spasming muscle by pressing but most of it's just that attention and like having like the right in the middle of the palm of our hands in Chinese medicine is a point um, that is we, we call it the extension of our heart pericardium eight and so um, you, say that. Like, you it gets like it gets hot when you push intention through it like sometimes I'll be working around on someone and I accidentally like touch my own leg or something I'm like whoa there's like iron on the ends of my arm <laughs> it, and it's it's intention like it's the heat of um like what, where you're sending your energy and it's not like there's a healer and a receiver or anything it's like just the power of two bits of earth matter coming together and reminding each other of what we are mm. or something you know? and it's just done done via the um, vessel of whatever modality of body work you happen to have learned but you don't have to have learned any learned anything you know I remember um like times when I've had injuries and to have someone like put their hand on the injury even when like you know not intend to like I'm going to heal you or anything they're just like oh how's your how's your knee going or whatever and it's just like whoa oh my god keep your hand there like it's crazy the power of touch um absolutely how even just the the subtlest, most untrained, you know, unintentional touch can like fully like flick our, flick our minds back into a state where we're actually present and feeling and sensing. Um, and I think the biggest thing is like that beautiful piece that you just said about dance and where it can take you. Like it doesn't have to be like, you know, hardcore all types of movement and you know trained movement and anything it could just be like step tapping for a long period of time and like ancient cultures that brought themselves into trance states through dance they didn't do elaborate dance moves they just often did one or two steps repeated over and over and over and over and over Mm. um and it it literally just like your brain can't do what it normally does and you in the highly strong way it normally is operating because you know you, you pound it out of it you, you the body takes over the body takes control of um yeah where that mind wants to go and it's the same thing when you are working on a body like a as when you're offering like you can't really think of much else because you you are so present with like deeply 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 listening to the little subtle changes inside the tissue of the body inside the energy of the body and like you can't not be present it's impossible yeah Yeah. and presence I think presence is a massive thing for the heart chakra as well Mm -hmm. like because it's bringing that like the whole spiritual aboveness back down and and tying it together with the roots that our Mm -hmm. body's going down into so the matter of our bodies and our bacteria families enterprises that live in our gut um mm. as well like along with the the energetic stuff that's happening to us mm. all the time I love um, it. so yeah it's like <laughs> it's so do you see when you get into it yeah yeah Sorry, I cut you much, off before too it. much no um no I just I don't have many more words that give it much justice. It's kind of just something like you, you feel, you notice it when it's, you've had it felt to you or you feel it. And sometimes you don't even realise like, like I have to 
make sure that I receive sessions on a semi-regular basis because you're sometimes just working on someone's back and pressing into the ground and feeling like, oh, like I don't know how effective this is. I don't know how it feels for them. And, and just to have that reminder of someone even just doing the slightest, gentlest, mm. you know, simple thing to you, you're like, this is incredible. Is this <laughs> what I'm, is this the experience that I'm like? Yeah, totally. Um, I'm absolutely yeah, experienced giving that. to people what I'm doing that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild. Something that I have also experienced in the Zentai uh, sessions with both you and Che is this kind of like symbiosis of bodies or like a unification Mm. or like a a breaking down of the boundaries where you become unified Mm. as like one body, so Mm -hmm. to speak. And there's this listening, there's this kind of like reciprocal listening to one another. And I think it's a, a fine art to be able to access that as a as a therapist Mm. um and something else that I love that I've um my uh Reiki teacher Kim from Pure Presence who said to me in in my Reiki level one training was that the the Reiki energy even like this this piece about like sometimes we try to consciously put our intention right and and that can be really powerful Mm. sure like we can really consciously activate our bodies and charge different parts of our bodies but then Mm. she was also saying we can do that and also the reiki and the energy already knows what to do and i think what you, you were saying that a little bit is like you can just switch off and it becomes you just become this channel you don't even really have to mm. think about it or you don't even really have to do much at all but the energy mm. knows where to flow and i love yeah. that like it knows yeah. where it needs to heal like you don't even if you've got pain in one area of the body you can like put reiki you can you can bring reiki to them on any part of the body and it will just naturally flow to the, those areas where there's lack or where there's need or where there's need for healing mm. or you know something missing and I love that yeah. this gives me this kind of like unwavering faith that it's all good you know <laughs> like it's the yeah like the in the cycle is like the destruction has to occur in order for the new life to grow so it's like when we're in those destructive moments or self-destructive moments and darkness or despair Mm. coming to this remembering that that's part of the cycle and just going with the flow of that Mm. you know and trying to find this learning wherever that is you know and we can listen to the pain as well uh, as messages Mm. yeah that's a massive one the the Mm. aversion to pain that we have Mm -hmm. in our society is is like it, it's madness because they're, as you said, they're messages, you mm. know, and, and all we do is describe and go and, and find the best way to escape it, whether it is like a, a grief, like you said before, like because they're so familiar with talking about the other half of the cycle of life, which is death and the decay, that mm. when something happens and we, we fall into a grief phase which is a very natural and very healthy process yeah. we sever that process as soon as possible with you know whatever whatever we do to escape it other than letting that fully play out and fully yeah. like drop into the the most extreme you know hurt parts to then come out the other side and have that closed process like and a lot of cultures do it you look at in Indonesia and all that sort of stuff where um, full grieving phases happen and then it's like they, you know, they don't get over it, but they, they come out the other side of it and there's all these incomplete phases in a lot of um, Western culture because they're trying mm-hmm. to escape dying mm-hmm. down into the pain. And, you mm-hmm. know, like when you when you are at the doctors or when you, you know, for example, when you get surgery and they come and they get bunch of medication like this and you take this then you do this then and you do this then and you like are actually really necessary to like make sure that your new wound doesn't have pain green and um ones are just for the pain you're like but I don't want one that's just for the pain you know, like with with the auto autopilot in, in all of us in in the way that we're you know treated by therapists and everything is often to just like how to minimize 
how to minimize pain, how to minimize um, yeah. Yeah, those sensations, and often it's masking how to how to best mask it. And so we don't get yeah. those little messages. We don't learn what they mean, and the problems that have caused the messages continue to go on because we don't yeah. address it. We just keep masking it. Just suppress the pain. Um, which is yeah. why I think, yeah, like being in your body, receiving body work, moving often is the best way to just be able to scan and to be able to know your body better. Like I can't imagine a world or a body that I don't know. I you know a body that like I've just had this big hype for back for ages and don't know what to do about it. Or, You've had or, what for ages? You know, that, like to have to have a big tightness or something that I don't understand, you know, yeah. and, and don't know how to feel into certain parts and you know, it's not like you know, do a full body scan every day, but you just automatically end up doing it if you're an embodied person. Yeah, that, that yes, definitely. Moves One thing, and we can integrate that into our lives. It doesn't have to be like this mm. sit aside for one hour to do the thing. It's mm. like we can integrate that yeah. practice at all, mm. all at various stages throughout our life, you know. Yeah. And, like, throughout the whole day, like, it, it's, it's so enjoyable to fully be, like, have activity to burn all of our senses like whether it's like sensations of our muscles stretching as we walk or the um feeling of the change of temperature across the back of our neck if there's wind and stuff and actually like fully being present and not even awake with yeah. all the changing senses that are happening all the time yeah rather than just like, sitting in this in car with our brains going <laughs> yeah and not yeah. being able to feel all the edges all the time yeah exactly and I often use the analogy of childbirth <laughs> to mm. like depict this idea very well because like if you were if you were to have like a natural unassisted childbirth the woman would experience a type of sensation that is likened to mm. something like pain although you know in some in hypnotherapy circles, they would say, don't use the word pain, you know, but because it's mm. just a sensation, it is. And it's our interpretation of that experience that we've been programmed to perceive as pain. Um, but yeah. it's our it's in our ability to sit in and surrender to the pain that our body actually opens up and, and mm. the ability to relax through the pain in a way I just think it's this mm. such a powerful metaphor for life because it's like that's how mm -hmm. the mother earth designed it you know what I mean that's that's literally mm. how our bodies operate is like in order to bring a new life into the world our body must open mm. and that's a sensation but we're designed to be able to cope with that but in this society yeah. we've lost touch with that we've lost touch with yeah. that inner strength and the inner resilience to be able to cope with the types mm. of like level of pain and embodied experience that is childbirth. But then also you can extrapolate mm. that out to not only be applicable for childbirth, but for all aspects of pain mm. and grieving and trauma and sorrow and surrender mm. to these emotional experiences that we have, you know, and yeah, coming into this feeling world and a compassion for ourselves and honoring our body. Mm. Yeah, that's so true. I love, I love that you, what you just said. Like, it just makes so much sense that we're literally physiologically designed to deal with that level. Yet, you know, uh, that's normally the the epitome, the crux of the description of yeah, this word pain that's so tabooed, um, I mean, so misused. Yeah, that it's like, yeah, where where do you like? It's like, oh, yeah, you haven't had you haven't had a child, though. You know, it's abused as this, like, that's the worst pain you can go through. Oh, my gosh, so there's it's so much fear the, surrounding it. it. Yeah, so yeah, much and the, the aversion, the fear that it's like, you know, like, I better take a headache tablet now in case this happens, right? Yeah. We're just, we don't want to even get to the point of experiencing the sensation. Mm -hmm. And I guess, like, a, a funny, like, <laughs> very mild um, example of how to maybe play with that, like 
pushing through those sensation barriers to find the opening where you don't have to go through childbirth to um, experience it. It's like even just like sitting, sitting on a foam roll or on your ITP and quad. Oh my gosh. Sitting on a yes. point ball and <laughs> you sit there and you experience all the sensations and it's just like you get to sit and feel all the messages that your body has stored in that one little part of you. Yeah. And you get to have a deeper conversation trust. Where it's going, well, there's a massive sensation. I don't trust what's going on. You can speak to it and go, no, okay, we're safe. We're just doing this. Like, this, this is good for us. We just open up. And you get to feel the conversation, you know, the, the action of the body and the body saying, all right, we're taking you here. Let's go. All right, you can open. Mm, and then you feel right. a little bit of oh, 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 oh. And that's that's the conversation that you have when you're um, working with another body in a in a bodywork session. Like mm. it's a trust building, um, and it's not like your body trusting me. It's it's the trust in that design of what we all are anyway. Mm. And kind of, kind of like almost the reminder to the other one. Like remember that this. Part of you is meant to be soft and meant to be supple and meant to open. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Why am yeah. I holding tension there? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Exactly. And then like you can start to build conscious practices and tools for building the confidence and courage to face all those different fears. And because one of the things is I feel like the contra mask of this love aspect of the heart is the fear, right? Mm-hmm. And in those deep kind of you could say negative emotions or something but those like deep swirling dark things that loom over us but sometimes we can um we can become overwhelmed and we can become like we have these limitations of perception when we live in those realities of fear like uh, like what you said before it's like oh I'll just take the thing just in case you know or like yeah. you kind of like oh, I won't do that because what if this happens, you know? So we limit our reality of what's possible through these fears. And so I think part of what this is is like building the courage to face the fears. It's not about like saying the fears don't exist. It's not about making them go away. It's about seeing them for exactly what they are as a message (laughs) and then leaning into that because it's calling you somewhere. It's taking you somewhere. Yeah. What does that fear mean? Why am I so scared of that? What is that telling me? Or what does that pain mean? And it can be a message, you know, and that's what I, I love this idea of like mapping the architecture of our bodies. So when you become, mm. when you, when you, when you start to access this world, it's almost like you can't unlearn it in a way. Once you start living an embodied mm. reality, you start to get to know yourself and your body so intimately and so deeply that you just continue to know and understand yourself and uncover these different layers, right? Like this deprogramming, you know, or decoding yeah. our patterns and our programs. And we can learn to map that. Like I know that I have this trigger or this program in me that when those types of situations happen, I trigger anger or something. So, But now that I'm aware of it, I can more quickly stop myself from like going down the rabbit hole of that emotion or if I need to feel that and feel into it and experience that to go with it, you know, but we can learn to become like acutely aware of what we're experiencing in our somatic awareness. And, um, yeah, that's why I think, you know, dance and meditation and, and body work and, and holistic therapies and creativity is so amazing because we get to explore mm. the fullness and the full depth of what's possible. Yeah. We, mm-hmm. Inside the only things really matter, like it doesn't all stuff aside and, and, you know, job description and personality and all that aside, like, body and if the body's not well and able to move and able to experience and sense and taste and taste through the skin and feel like you know what's the point of having all this and you know having all these experiences and and you know got I don't know just being distracted by all these like superfluous add-ons that are meant to bring us joy or excitement in life you know all the things that we can buy like but if the body isn't working at its full capacity and having like 
the ability to have the most sensitive um, perception of the world and, and perception of itself. And yeah, like that is kind yeah, of like absolutely. a little bit. Yeah. And developing that sensitivity. Like um, one of the mm. one of my programs, and I think I hear this a lot with with my clients, and I hear the rhetoric thrown around a lot in this culture is that like you're so oversensitive, or like you're stop being like you're too sensitive, like mm. stop stop taking everything so personally. Mm. I think there is like definitely an aspect of that where we need to like harden up and and stop whinging and whining for sure. But then I think there's also this other reality mm. that's like. Um, we can build our sensitivity and we can use our sensitivity as a tool to guide us. And that can actually be, um, yeah, it can be a tool for us that we, when we can learn to tap into that and tap into the sensitivity of our, even our emotional world. So like, what is that? Why is that reaction? Why is that reaction so big? Or why is that emotion so heavy? You know, yeah. like, what is that? And so, yeah. You also mentioned um yeah, you spoke a like oh yeah go for it. No, okay. Okay. I was just gonna say you mentioned this idea that you can you can design like or it's part of the design. And I love this idea of like lifestyle design, you know, like we can consciously create our lives around mm. us how we please, you know, like <laughs> and that's amazing. And I understand there's yeah. There's different socio-cultural political factors where, you know, there is certain privileges that some people have that others don't have and accessibility is a part of that conversation. Mm. But for, like yeah. for me who is in a position of privilege where I'm able to um, have access to resources quite freely, mm. um, I can design my life in a way that is conscious of these things. So now then I can step into a reality where I'm able to use my privilege as a way to heal or help others, you know, and mm. there's this, it, this idea of like regenerative agriculture, you know, it's like this I idea that like rather than like it's like healing the wounds, you know, like we can use our power and, and our um mm our magic or our creativity or our storytelling as a way to like like weave the wounds back together like literally and metaphorically <laughs> you know so coming into these like stepping into that the power of the, your our capacity to regenerate mm. um, and also consciously designing our lives in a way that that's integrated into it and so like something that is amazing in the work that you do is this waste-free lifestyle that you've created for yourself and you have this 33-day guide you know uh living a waste a waste-free living the waste-free way in 33 days and I think that type of work is epic you know and these types of conversations about um how we can disengage from certain practices of consumerism or we can start to, um, I think in one of our conversations previously, I think you even took, and you can speak to this a little bit, like we talk about conscious consumerism, but then I think you take it a step further and it's like conscious non-consumerism as well. And it's like what are the things we can let go of and, and cleanse and clear away that we don't actually need, you know, and so, yeah, I can speak a little bit to that. There's, I, I could speak to that for hours. Um, <laughs> so much, fair enough too. Um, but yeah, it's, there's, there's just so much and it, it goes back to like being in the body and like all the things that we have uh, here, like inside our bodies and you surround yourself, you know, design in, in if you do have the privilege of being able to design and to curate the you know to have so many beautiful aspects to your life then why why would we suffer why would we put ourselves through suffering to you know whip ourselves on the back to make all this money to then spend on all the things you don't need um and it's, it's interesting like the some of the people that are very close to me like including my partner it's like you think to try and buy them a gift and there's nothing you can buy because or 
you know, even there's nothing we can do for them or make a birthday a special day because all the things that we would pick would be the things that we make sure that we integrate all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if you have, and, and you know, for us, that's always so simple. It's just like being at the beach, mm. having some nice organic food, like, you know, spending time going for a walk in the forest, mm. all these great, lovely things. And like, yeah, it, it's hard to like talk or advice give on like how to change your life and how to make your life so, you know, great and abundant and happy without um, going back to that very, very important like base um, point of the fact that we only have this option to even have this conversation because we are in a position of privilege. Um, and for a long time I was like, you know, so guilty of like utilizing that but it's like the reality is that you have that and there's nothing you can you know you can't get rid of it and you can't there's no point in just like wasting it or um you know so it's like being so responsible with it by filling your own cup in the most conscious and like regenerative way possible so that you can then as you said like work to like pay pay that privilege on and Mm. send it on and balance it out by using your full cup full of life force to then do do and be and contribute well to you know the wider community and um those who are less privileged the earth who need those stitches back together and um yeah and whatever like micro or macro projects that they you know turn up in yep. your life like yeah um but yeah it it was like to be a non-consumer we're, we're innately consumers and we're never going to not be consumers you can't run away from everything and whether it's like consuming you know it's plastic stuff or food or you know air or art we're going to consume all types of things petrol for our cars to get us to a colour theory show, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, like we have to we have to accept that we are consumers and we, well, we're not the type of consumers that we're sold we are. You know, we're, we're convinced we require X amount of consumptive products and additions to our lives, co- coating these beautiful bodies that have everything already in them to make us happy coating them in in other things and stuff and clothes and experiences and like gadgets and additives but yeah you know none of that makes any sense so so there's like once you start questioning if you haven't really dove into that um that thought before like you can literally look around a house and and get rid of most things if you mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. walked around what you know what I need yeah. um Man, but at the same time, I'm like, continuously grappling mm-hmm. with that <laughs> every day of my life I'm like what can I get rid of <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah but it's also like you know there's a lot of stuff that if it's serving a purpose you know, and if it's bringing joy and you know creating opportunities to have art or have nice experiences with family members or mm-hmm. you know facilitating a really nice thing for yourself or yeah a connection and worth having like it's it's not about giving everything up and having everything you own in a backpack yeah um, and that's yeah. that's not to me that's not non-consumerism it's just like my intention and like the kind of I guess description that my partner and I use when we talk about waste free living is to not be responsible to like for, for as much as possible to not be responsible for the production of new inorganic matter mm. or inorganic products whether that's like buying an item or um you know contributing to a business that we don't align with or you know whatever it is it's like we want to be contributing and voting with our dollar with our love notes to the things that that Mm -hmm. actually bring bring us joy and and do some sort of regeneration 
to something somewhere and it, yeah. that can't always happen but that's like where possible yeah and to the best of our capacity but it's surprising yeah. how much that can actually happen you know there's there's a few there's always like a few little hiccups or a few little bits where it's like oh this is sticky where does my moral compass want to send me like I'm having to pick between two kind of crummy options but yeah. for the most part like once you practice more and more and you realize how much you can shed it really you know that's not it's not like on the daily you're having to face those moral issues you know okay. it's like you can just find a way to just actually just bypass so much of it mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, actually I, think- I just don't do that anymore yeah exactly and I think a lot of it is about being content with what you've already got you know like mm. we, we we have so much wealth and abundance already around us you know I mean I'm just speaking for myself at least you know um again I come from a world of privilege for sure in terms of you know just the fact that I'm live in Australia is a privilege compared to most people on that earth you know and yeah so just I guess just sitting in that contentment with wherever you're at you know, and mm. not always having to have more. Like it, it. We sort of we tend to, um, we we tend to have our happiness be determined by this ever uh, ever increasing sense of wanting more. You know, like I'll only ever be happy when I have this, or I'll only ever be happy yeah. if my life looks like this. And so, like taking a step back from that and looking at like where can we actually really step into gratitude and appreciation for what we really have around us and that's a big piece of the heart chakra for me is like gratitude Mm. and I think with gratitude comes humility you know like they kind of go hand in hand because when you honor something and when you are grateful for something Mm. you have to step in the embodiment of humility as well because you're you're faced with your ego and you have to let your ego down to say thank you you know, and that's like this beautiful energetic exchange that is quite magic and very powerful and potent, you know, when we can really cultivate gratitude. (laughs) Yay. And um, you do all kinds of amazing things. You've got uh, the Yes End Festival coming up and I've had some really awesome experiences with you at New Kind Festival and Earth Frequency Festival and you're always around and about with your partner Che doing incredible work. So do you want to have a little bit of a, like, if you wanted to send people in the direction of your work and what is upcoming, how could people find out more about what you're doing? Um. What have I got coming up? Yeah, the Yes End Festival is really exciting. Um, we'll both be offering a bunch of different things from morning movement workshops to Zentai Shiatsu sessions to Zentai Shiatsu workshops to a bit of play where potentially some strange characters might be arriving, um, doing some silly things. I missed that um, last bit, actually. Sorry. Some, some, there might be some um, paleolithic um play-based games happening Mm. Um, yeah and that is a really really beautiful amazing potent festival that i've had the privilege of being part of the last two years that's the Um, yes end festival yeah and it's like yes with a little end time um they haven't released tickets yet but i think you can go on their website and sign up on the mailing list when the tickets drop um or follow my social media because I'll, I'll put some links and stuff out there yeah and I'll, I'll put all the links to your social media in the description of wherever this is going to be <laughs> ends up. um yeah and I guess like I'm always so happy to um join and collaborate and contribute to other people's um visions and like have whatever of my offerings you know, join on to other people's things. So whether it's a mystery living talk at a school or um, having my um, dance film used in a, a festival, um, whatever it is, it's like I've just, I'm just an email away. So, awesome. yeah, you can always find me on my Waste Freeway website, the Waste Freeway 
Bitcoinpodcast.com. And that's the little E's arriving. <laughs> that's probably <laughs> time to sign off. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing time with us. And I'm so excited about the workshop on Sunday. If anyone sees this Yay, before so then, excited. please, please uh, come along. It's going to be a beautiful heart opening embodiment experience. Yay. I'm um, excited. <laughs> take care. Say hi to your little one. <laughs> They're, they're ready for Mama Bear. Bye. Alrighty, bye.